On this video, we're going to talk about drill bit sizes, uh, mainly drill and tap sizes. Stuff you'll be using in the off season and you'll need to know. More on that when we come back. On this video, we're going to talk about drill and taps and drill bits and threads and thread pitches and all the neat stuff you need to know about drilling and tapping holes. Um, a lot of a lot of information there, but let's start with drill bits. You know, drill bits uh, come in a big uh, range of sizes. Um, generally, we buy a drill index and it has fraction sizes in it. But along with fraction sizes, you can get wire sizes and number sizes or letters. So wire and number is often this called two different things, but it's the same thing. Uh, so you have fraction wire number or letter size and if you look at this chart here you see that uh, the smallest drill bit on the chart is an 80 drill size which is 13 thousandths in diameter very small uh, and it goes all the way up to one so it's one to 80 so there's 80 drill bits there 80 drill bit sizes and a number one drill bit is 228 diameter uh, then it starts with the letter A at 234 and goes to Z at 413. Okay, mixed in amongst them are fractions up to 2764s. Okay, so then from there you go to one inch. So you have, this is a chart of drill sizes. In these drills, uh, in all these drill sizes, there'll be a drill for each tap size. Okay, if you buy a chart from like MSC or uh, Kerry Lane or McCarr, McMasters, you know, it'll have probably the tap sizes on it. Okay, and it'll be one of these drill bit sizes. There, like I said, there's a lot, to, a lot of choices there, but one of them will be your tap size. Okay, so then we have the next chart we have is probably every size of tap that you can probably imagine okay including metric uh, we have machine screw taps uh, machine screw sizes so machine screw would be like a 1032 uh, that's something that you might use on your race car um, so you have machine screws then you have bolt sizes um, and then you also have uh, some helical sizes but on this list there are no helicals on this list. On this list, it starts with a 080. You have coarse and fine thread taps, and then you have some specialty taps, but for the, for the most part, we're talking about coarse and fine thread. Uh, you have common things, a 632, an 832, a 1032. These are machine screw sizes. Uh, you can run into some of them on uh, some race car parts. Uh, you know, other common sizes start at the quarter inch, quarter 20, um, 5 16 18 is, you know, very common size in, in the birdcage bolts. Um, that's, of course, uh, 5 16 24 would be the fine thread. 3 8 16 common size. Uh, 7 16 20 would be like caliper bolts. Uh, half 13. Uh, we use lower control arm bolts are usually half 13 uh, half 20 is a common size also uh, 5 8 18 that's a fine thread for a swedge tube uh, four link rods usually are 5 8 18 um, right and left handed uh, 3 quarter 10 that's a coarse thread 3 quarter and 3 quarter 16 that's fine thread like a swedge tube for a pull bar or something uh, so these are just a few of the common sizes of taps. So let's go back and look at a quarter 20. A quarter 20 will take a number 7 drill bit or a 1364, a 201 diameter. Okay, so you can fudge your drill size just a little. But when you drill a 201 hole, you're drilling and leaving a percentage of thread left and and 
somebody over time, I don't know who, but somebody over time figured out that this percentage is uh, good enough. It's not 100% full thread, but it's 70%, I think, of the thread. And it creates a strong enough holding value and reduces the interference fit to get the bolt in the hole. So like you can't just be uh, perfect. It has to have a little slop at the bottom of the tap, uh, the inside part of the thread. So for an example, and I'll list these below, uh, you know, 5 is going to take a, a letter uh, I. Um, 3 8 16 is going to take a 5 16 drill bit. Uh, half Half 20 is going to take a 2964 drill bit. Uh, so different sizes are going to take these different drill bits. So this chart, you can download it from our website. I'll put a link below for that so you can download that. Um, this chart will tell you what size drill bit you need for that particular tap. And a guy should probably buy some taps and some drill bits and just keep them together. Put them in a tube and keep them together uh, so you don't have to go looking for them and you don't have to go back to the chart constantly to see what size you need um, for that tap. Now taps come in different shapes, forms. I mean there's machine uh, like a CNC machine type tap. There's helix taps and there's high spirals and there's coated and not coated and for the general purpose you know the cost and cost efficiency the non-coated tap is um, what you're going to be looking at and here we show three different taps uh, a bottom a plug and a taper okay a taper tap has a lot of taper at the bottom as its name would uh, not the best, it's for a bottom, uh, bottoming hole or a blind hole, but good for a through hole. Uh, this tap also allows you to get the point of the tap kind of down in the hole. It's better for hand tapping without any guiding. Um, so you can kind of get the tap down in the hole a ways to get it started and you're getting it straight with the hole. So you can get the tap crooked and then it'll try to straighten up and this is generally when you break a tap. And if you're using, you know, a quarter 20 tap or smaller, be very careful because as you're tapping it, you could just manhandle a little and it'll snap the tap right off. And once you break the tap in the hole, you are in trouble because getting the tap out is way harder than it is breaking it. So be very gentle with the smaller taps. Uh, if you're chasing a thread, uh, that also is a little easier. Now, here's a little warning. When you're tapping a new hole, it's going to take some lubrication. So WD-40, grease, tapping fluid, if you have it. If you don't have it, use something to lubricate the tap or you're going to get yourself in trouble. Tap in, back up, break the chip. Tap in, back up, break the chip. If you don't break the chip freely, you can tap and you can lock this thing up and you will never be able to get it out. So tap, you know, a turn, back it up a quarter, tap a turn, back it up a quarter, tap a turn, back it up a quarter. And every time you back it up, it'll break the chip. Uh, aluminum, just because it's a softer material, it's very gummy and it doesn't, you know, like to have uh, a dry tap. So it really needs some lubrication to get the tap to run through the, the uh, material. Um, it's very important. So you, sometimes you think oh, I can get away with it on aluminum. It's probably where you're going to have your most difficulties tapping is aluminum. If you're retapping a hole, you know, you got product from somebody and maybe it's got some anodized in it. Um, if it's a colored anodized, it's still going to need lubricant. If it's a hard anodized, make sure you're using a good sharp uh, a tap. So if you got a tap over here, you've been tapping steel with and it's a little beat up, you might want to get a new tap to tap hard-coated anodized because it can create some problems. It is very hard uh, surface and even though it's on aluminum it'll trick you and it'll get you in trouble so don't let yourself get in trouble. 
The, as you can see, you know, the bottoming tap would be what you'd want for a blind hole, and you might have to use a tapered tap or a plug tap to get the hole started, and then move over to your bottoming tap to get down as deep as you can get to get that bolt in there. So, um, these pitchers here, of these taps, they push the chip forward, so it's going to be in the bottom of the hole if it's not a a through hole. A spiral tap, which I will try to show you a picture of a spiral tap also. This tap, spiral tap, will lift the chip out of the top of the hole. Okay, it's ideal for CNC machines or machines. Uh, you can use it for hand tapping. It's a very good tap to use. Uh, and you can get it in a plug or bottom or a taper also. More expensive, uh, generally coated, so it runs into a little more money. Um, thread pitch. So what is the thread pitch? I have a quarter 20. Well, that means that it's a quarter inch diameter and there's 20 threads per one inch. Okay, so it's pretty fine threaded. Uh, if it was a metric thread, it would say the size, like the quarter, it, it might say uh, 7 millimeter, 1.0. That means that every millimeter, every 39.4 thousandths, there's a thread, there's a pitch, uh, or 1.25 or 1.5. These are common sizes for metric. Um, when you're machining them, a lot of times guys like that because it's easier to figure the thread pitch, uh, but it is, it is what it is. Metric is a little more confusing, but the chart also has metric sizes on it, so it requires a drill bit to drill metric size, just like it requires a drill bit to, to drill a fraction size tap. Um, helicoils. Helicoils are, you know, to replace the threads after they're stripped out. So they have a bigger, um, I should silence my phone before I do a video, but they have a bigger, uh, you know, a bigger thread because you're, you're replacing the threads. Uh, so generally, you can buy a helical tap by itself, but you can buy a kit with some inserts, it has a drill bit and a tap, so that's the best way to buy them. A lot of times your automotive shops, O'Reilly's, Tractor Supply, um, will have these Lowe's. Lowe's will have a helical tap, and Lowe's will have a, uh, a tap section uh, around their bolts. So. You know, if you can't find them, you know, online at MSC, uh, Macar Masters, different places. Now, these big brand name companies, uh, uh, taps will be more expensive, you know. So, um, the taps you get through the racing industry, maybe like through Speedway Motors, um, Jags, All Star Performance, to tap a switch tube, it's going to get the job done, okay. And since you're not going to use it a lot, you're going to use it a little, they'll get you by. They're not the greatest taps. You know, Chinese taps are not the greatest taps to be buying if you're, if you're tapping a raw hole. So if you're building some stuff and you're tapping steel or you're tapping aluminum and you're just not comfortable with buying the taps, call me. I'll buy the taps for you. Um, you know, we can provide that stuff for you if you need to. Uh, like I said, you can get it through MSC. A lot of times you will pay more money for that type of tap uh, than, you know, what I'm going to pay because I'm buying them in bulk. Uh, and taps come in uh, different sizes. So there's, um, oh, I don't really remember because you're not going to deal with it and we don't deal with it much. I think most of them are in an H3 and there might be six or nine different tap sizes and they get pretty tight and they change a couple of thousandths. Um, if you're dealing with powder coated parts and the manufacturer's not running a tap through them bolts and bolt holes before you, you know, bolt the part up, it's very important that you do because these bolts nowadays, you take a number five or a number three and they're not going to push their way through there without damage. And even like on a hard coat aluminum, it's going to damage the bolt. So it's very important that you tap these holes out. 
we try very hard to tap the holes on all of our product. It's a very pain to do, but we do it um, because it's easier. I feel like it's easier for us to do it than it would be for you. And I feel like it's the right thing to do. So your manufacturer, I mean, if he's going to be a manufacturer, he needs to tap them holes out. If you're buying product from somebody that ain't tapping them holes out, get on them about it or get away from them. One of the two, you know, but you can't run that. You can't run that bolt through that hole. Uh, you can get lucky sometimes and sometimes you can't. So uh, you get the paint out of them holes. Uh, your chassis guys, uh, a lot of times they're very good about tapping holes, uh, reaming holes, um, but cleaning the paint out of the holes. Likewise, if you need the drill bits or a reamer for different operations and you don't feel comfortable buying them, we'll, we'll handle that for you. But um, um, yeah, I think in, in general, I'll put a link to some of this stuff below uh, so you can download uh, a link to these uh, PDFs for these drill sizes and the tap sizes. Um, we have a blog. It talks a little bit about this drill and tap size on our website. I'll put that link below. But if you have questions, like always, comment. Uh, if, you, if you don't understand, I didn't cover every aspect of threads. Threads are very complex machining process. And generally, if you buy a drill bit and a tap, you can master, uh, and some lubrication, you can master tapping holes and be very successful at it. Uh, you don't need to necessarily know all the ins and outs. Um, but a general purpose tap will get uh, the job done. There also is pipe tap that we didn't discuss. Pipe tap is uh, a little more difficult. Uh, you can get them in a straight and a taper. 90% um, of them are tapered. And the tapered ones have a depth they want to be tapped at, which is about eight turns. Um, nine, ten turns, and you'll, you can run it too deep, especially like on a Schrader valve. Schrader valves are pretty picky, so on pipe taps, you might tap it a little bit, try your Schrader valve, and you're going to see I didn't go in very good. Then go another turn and a half, and then try it again until you go, okay, I like that fit. Uh, pipe, tapered pipe taps are designed to interfere the fit to seal, okay? Probably wouldn't hurt to put a little Teflon tape or a little pipe dope on. If you're, you know, like drilling a Schrader valve or something, uh, the... Schrader valves with an O-ring are, they create, they have to have a seal for the O-ring to set on. So I don't really recommend trying to um, tackle that process. If you're going to put a Schrader valve in a shock, you're going to be way better off with a pipe tap, a tapered pipe tap. So uh, pipe, uh, pipe taps are a little bit different breeds um, and, you know, it wouldn't hurt to maybe practice. But as all taps, they need some lubricant or you're going to get yourself into trouble. So a uh, little information about tapping some holes. Hope this helps makes your off-season jobs easier. I appreciate you guys hanging around out till the end. Like and share our videos. Help us grow our channel. If you have ideas for more videos or better videos or different videos, let me know and uh, we'll get them done for you. As always, go fast, go left. God bless you, and we'll see you the next time.